Hello the internet, I'm Ninark, and welcome back to my series on making a platformer in Construct 2. Now this is part 2 in a 2 million part series, so if you haven't watched part 1 yet, go back and do that now. There will be a link right there. Oh, sorry, too fast. No, just kidding. There it is. Uh, watch it, come back here, and you should be in this position right here. So when we press play, you'll see our character falls, he moves to the right, he moves to the left, he jumps, he doesn't do much else, he doesn't even run. Wow. Uh, now I've modified some of the variables and his uh, platforming behaviors. Um, it doesn't really matter, I just wanted it to feel a little bit better. So you can play around with these all you want. It's not really going to affect the tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is add animations to our player. Uh, so the way to do that is you double click on your sprite and it'll open up the sprite editor, my favorite sprite editor in the world. And uh, you're going to go up to this animation box and right click and add a new animation. We're going to call this animation run. All right, so make sure you selected the run animation and you'll see it's just a blank uh, canvas with one frame. Now we want to import frames from files. Uh, like I had in the first video, I have uh, some GIFs already made for my animations. Uh, you can make your animations however you want. If you want to buy these specific ones, you can go to my itch page, it's in the description and it will give you a link to buy them for a dollar. So we're going to want to use this run animation. We're going to double click on that and it'll import our run animation right here into our animation frame. I'm going to right click on the first uh, default frame and delete that out so we just have a nice running animation. Now make sure you change, well you don't have to change the speed if you don't want to. I'm going to change the speed. But make sure you change it to loop. We want them to continuously run and not just do one step and then stop. That wouldn't help us very much. So there you go, if you press P, a little preview comes up, you can see him running. Cool, that's exactly what we want. So now if you press play, everything is exactly the same. He still doesn't run, he still doesn't jump. Uh, I mean, he does, but he doesn't. Anyway, you get the point. So the way we're going to make him run is go to our event sheet. Now, the event sheet is a very uh, magical thing. It's basically just a list of if-then statements. So you might say something like, if health equals zero, then kill player. Um, or, you know, whatever else you want to do in your game. Uh, all right, real quick, I'm just going to jump in here um, and talk a little bit more about the event sheet because I feel like I didn't cover it properly. Uh, this is taken after I finished the tutorial, so ignore everything. It's spoilers. Anyway. So, like I said, it's if-then statements, but instead of if blank, then blank, like you might write in code, uh, you would add an event and then uh, produce an action. So if you click to add event and, for example, go to system, these are all your objects that actually have events that go with them. Uh, under system, they have one called every x seconds. We can make it 10 seconds, and the action would be that our player um, is destroyed. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we don't want that actual series of things to happen, but that's just kind of a basic uh, understanding. You can add more actions by just clicking that and doing other things and pressing buttons at random like I'm doing. Um, so yeah, just wanted to add that in real quick. Anyways, back to the video. Uh, the event we're looking for is a uh, keyboard press right and keyboard press left. Uh, we want him to be not mirrored when he's going to the right, and we want him, his uh, sprite to be mirrored when he's moving to the left, so it looks like he's facing a different direction. That's just a little trick in a lot of game devs' pockets, is that instead of actually animating a whole other animation going the opposite way, you just flip the sprite backwards, and it's t totally fine, and great, and amazing, and fast and easy, which is exactly what we want. Alright, so if we go to Add Event, we'll come up with these objects, uh, but you'll notice if, even if you go into the system uh, dialog box right here, you won't find any keyboard events. And this is because Construct 2 eliminates everything that it doesn't necessarily need for your game, and you have to add everything in later, just, just so that uh, it doesn't convolute your program with a bunch of excess uh, features that you don't actually really need to compile. So in order to add our keyboard events to our event sheet, we're going to need to add our keyboard to our uh, layout here. Now the way you do that is just how you create an object, right click, insert new object, go to keyboard under input, double click on that, and now your keyboard is in your project. Uh, it's not actually physically anywhere, there's no actual keyboard that comes up or anything, it just needs to be in your project 
in the folder in order for the events to come up. Now, right now, I'm actually going to organize a little bit, which I suggest, I highly suggest you do, uh, because your project can get really out of hand really quickly if you are adding a lot of new sprites, new objects and things. Uh, you will have no idea where anything is. Big lists of things called sprite 1 through 100, and you have no idea what you're doing. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And yeah, it's awful pretty much. So I'm just going to make a couple subfolders here by right clicking on object type, add subfolder. Uh, I'm going to put my keyboard in my misc folder. That's already in there. I'm going to put my player in my player folder and my platform in my platforms folder. And we can close all these up so it looks nice and clean, which is what I want. Um, if you don't want that, you just live your dreams, dude. Uh, just know that it's going to get hard for you later on. Anyway, so we go to the event sheet. Now if we go to add event and double click on the miss folder where we put our keyboard, there's our keyboard showing up right there. If you double click on that, it'll take you to some uh, events that happen. Key is down, other things. Don't worry about key codes right now. That's a whole nother party. But under keyboard, we just want is key is down. So we just click that, click on the click to choose, press the right arrow key because that's what we want for right now. Press OK. Done, and now we have a nice event here that is keyboard right arrow down. Uh, now what we want to happen is for the sprite to be facing to the right, which means it will be not mirrored. So we'll go to add action, we'll click the player folder, open up our player, and you'll see right here uh, under appearance there is a set mirrored uh, option here. Now we want not mirrored, but if you double click on this set mirrored, you can change the state to not mirrored, which is what we want to do. So now when he the keyboard is, uh, the right arrow is down, the keyboard will be not mirrored, which is what we want. That seems weird to say that, but it's because when we add the left arrow is down, uh, it's going to be mirrored, so it needs to switch back and forth, and it needs to know that when the right arrow is down, it actually flips back around. So we're going to just copy this event, and the way you do that is hold down control, click here. If you click here, it's a whole different, uh, function. It's strange, kind of. Um, but yeah, we want to click on the far left side. Make sure you just get this whole box. If you just click on this, it's just going to add a new uh, event that goes along with this, and it's not going to do what you want to do. So make sure you click on the outside, hold down control, drag, and you will have a separate uh, event. So we're going to switch this to left arrow. So you just click on that, click on left arrow, press OK, press done. And then we want to set the player to mirrored. Press done. All right, cool. So if we play that layout, we'll see now that our player, when he's facing to the right, he faces to the left. I mean, wow, that's not what happens. When you press the right arrow key, he faces to the right. And if you press the left arrow key, he faces to the left. And when you let go, he stays there. So he's always looking for, you know, bad guys or something. Right. So, but he still doesn't run, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. So to do this, it's going to get kind of complicated, not crazy, but just follow along. So we're going to go to add event, go to player, double click on the player, go down to his platform uh, events right here. Now we want the first one to be is on floor. So that just means that he is physically on the floor touching, not falling. So if we double click on that, it will add uh, a nice little event right here. Now this time we want to right click on here, right click inside the box and not this outside, this inside. I wish there was a better way to explain this. Click on that, right click, and add another condition. Now the other condition we want is if player is moving. So now we have if the player is on the ground and if he's moving, we want the action to be that our player go to animation, set animation, and then set it to run. So if you type in a quote, it will bring up uh, the options, the animations that we have right now, we're going to click run. You can just type this out if you want. Uh, it still works if you just physically type out run and put quotation marks. It'll know what you're talking about. Um, but I just like to make sure that I get it absolutely right so I, write, or I uh, draw the quotation and select the animation from the drop down. So if we press done, we'll see now that if we press play, our character will run to the right and run to the left. However, he doesn't stop running. He just keeps running forever. So we want to fix that. Now how we do that is we're going to add a new event. Go to player. Click on player. 
We want is on floor as well. And then we also want to add another condition. Player is moving. Now, well, I know it seems strange that we're going to pick is moving, but there's a cool little trick. So if you right click on any event or almost any event, you can go down here to the invert button. Now this means it'll return uh, the opposite of what the uh, condition is. So here, instead of platform is moving, we want the player to be not, or it's reading if the player is not moving, which is, you know, what we want. So if we add an action, go to our player, click our player, go down to uh, set animation, and we want to set this to idle. So now when we press play, our character will run when he's running and stop when he's stopped. Run, stop, run, stop. Cool. So that's awesome. Now, what we don't have yet is a jumping animation or a falling animation. So we're going to do that now. All right, let's go back to our layout, double click on our player, go back to this lovely piece of software, right click, add animation, and we're going to call this jump. Now, make sure you have the jump animation click so you don't mess out up any of your other animations. Right click, import frames from files. Now, I have a jump animation here somewhere, there it is, um, but it's a jump and fall animation. So if you double click on this, you'll see, let's just delete this first frame, you'll see that he bends down, goes up on one knee, pulls that knee up a little bit higher, he kind of floats in the air, and he drifts back down. Now I just want the jumping part, so I'm going to delete these last three frames, just to show that he just goes from the ground up and into the air. Now we're going to add another animation called fall. Now make sure you have the fall animation clicked again, import frames from files, click on the jump animation again, and now let's delete the first three frames. Now you'll see how this works in a second. So if you exit out of this, now that we have all the animations ready, go back to the event sheet. Now we're going to want to add a new event, go to player, down, back to platform, and is jumping. That's what we wanted to select. So we're going to add action, go back to player, click on him, set animation, and we want this to be jump. Done. All right. And now a new event again. Player is falling. And the last icing on the cake, set animation to fall. Enter. Now I like to use the, leave the idle uh, animation at the end of the sheet, um, just so it kind of defaults back to it. It probably we would never not work, but you know, just for good measure, we'll do that anyway. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is add a group. Now, a group is just something to keep everything in your event sheet organized because in a bigger game, you're going to have hundreds, maybe even thousands of lines of code, and you will not be able to know what the hell is going on if you don't create some groups. So you right click, add group. I already made a group called movement. Now make sure you select the outer box again, not the inner box, totally different, outer box. Move it into movement. You'll see that those that arrow comes up right there. And now you can collapse your movement and never have to look at it ever again until you have to debug one day for some reason. So now if you press play, you'll see our hero. He stands idle, he runs to the left, he runs to the right, he jumps, and he falls. You know what? He doesn't fall correctly, though, for some reason. Do, 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 do. Make this seven. Hmm. I'm such a professional. Just do everything I say, except for when I say things that aren't working. I oh, know it's working. It's just happening really fast. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I thought I did something wrong, but I guess I didn't. So good on you. All right, well, uh, that's all we have time for for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorials. If you do, like and subscribe, please. And if you don't, like and subscribe, please. Um, and I hope to show you guys some cool new things to put in your platformer um, next time. All right, GG, everyone.